All right, Mr. Wright here with lesson eight for the saxophone. This is a very important lesson because in this lesson we talk about single eighth notes and eighth note rests. In the previous lesson we had eighth notes that were joined together by a bar and they were always in groups of two. And sometimes you'll see them in groups of four, like down here, uh, the second line of number two. But, uh, and they're always joined together by a bar. But what if you want to have just a single eighth note by itself? Well, that eighth note only takes up the first half of the first beat. So there's got to be something to fill that void. And also you'll notice it's kind of got a funny looking stem right there, a little flag thing that's sometimes called. See, over here in measure two, if you cut off that other eighth note right there, that little stem right there kind of curls up into like a fetal position and it looks sort of like this little flag right here it's as it's called so that's what an eighth note looks like when it's all by itself and it's only taking up the first half this first downbeat of that first beat and so therefore this we have to have an eighth note rest and that's what this little thing is right here it looks sort of like a deformed number seven but uh it, it's just an eighth note rest. It takes up of a half of beat of, um, of silence. So the first half of the beat we're playing and then we're resting the second half of the beat. So it's da, rest, two, three, four, D, da, rest, da, rest, da, rest. So you'll notice you will go dum, boom. You're right on that next beat immediately because you're only resting for the upbeat or the second half of the beat. So it's kind of fast. So it's Bop, rest, two, three, four, one, and two, the, four, bump, two, the, four, one, and two, the, and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, like so. So let me play number one, and with the metronome, again, I've got the metronome set at 90 beats per minute, so, and, I, and we're also playing these two harmony notes to what the rest of the band will be playing. They'll be playing the pitches I was singing, but you'll be playing uh, an E, two, three, four, E, F sharp, like so. So let's try number one. And one, two, three, two, three, four. So now let's move on to number two. In number two, I've put a bracket around the first eighth note and this eighth note rest. Now you'll notice that it's not just curled up like that. What we're doing is we're there's these these are still eighth notes, but they've got an eighth note rest in between them. Sometimes you'll see it written this way. So I wanted to kind of show you this example also, where you have just an eighth note on the downbeat and an eighth note rest on the upbeat. And they're still, you know, these eighth note bar, they're still trying to reach around the despicable eighth note rest. They're trying to separate them, but they can't be separated. So there's these eighth note rest. So dum, 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 one and two. So you're bump, rest, dum, rest, dum, rest, dum. So it's, it's just make another way of saying that we want these notes to be played short. Another way you could write that is four quarter notes with staccato dots over them to make them short. Well, that's just another way. So... We'll play one, two, three, four, one and two, three, four and one and two, three, four and one, two. So you have to pay attention to these little eighth note rest in between these eighth notes. So let's try number two now. It's two lines long. Two lines long. One, two, three. You'll notice when you're playing downbeats, I'm having you pop your first finger down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Or one and two and three and four and. Very important to be able to have that feel. Number three starts off with just straight ahead quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Then you rest on the downbeat and you play only on the upbeat. So in this measure, the second measure of number three, you're going to go and two and three. 
and four and one two three four and two and three and four and one and two three and four and one and two and four and one and two and three and four and one super important exercise because this upbeat feel can just open up all kinds of rhythmic possibilities for us so here comes number three and oh one two three to the next page number four and number four we go one and two three and four and one and two three and four and one and two and three and and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and and one and and three and four and one two three four let's try number four and, and you'll notice right here this is kind of tricky you got one and two three and so on the end of three is when this little eighth note kicks in on the upbeat or the second half of beat three. So that's important. You can't just kind of, oh, I think I'll come in here. No, you're going to have to count it. So you're going to have to go one and two, three and four and, right? And notice this next downbeat right here comes right after that last upbeat of four or the second half of four. So it's one and two, three and four and one and two three and four and one and like that let's try number four. One and two and Number five, we start off with a low G, one, two, three of the left hand, no octave key. G, E, F sharp, like that. And you, here you gotta go one and two, three and four and one, like so. Ah, such big jumps in the pitches, right? Number five. Oh, look though at the second line though. It goes one, two, and three and four, one, two, and three and four and one two and three and four one so it's kind of a tricky exercise number five. One, two, three. <laughs> Number six, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Number six, one, two, three, three, four. Playing number six, you got to remember no octave key for these two notes, and you got pop it down. Uh, this guy back here, the octave key for the high F sharp, the E, and then you got to let go of it again for the low G. So if it's not jumping down, also sometimes even though you let go of the octave key, if you don't retongue this note, this lower G, sometimes the reed will want to stay vibrating up at that high frequency, and a, and a high G will come out. So if that's taking place, you know, be aware of that. Also, if you've got your neck strap or neck joint turned too much to one way or the other it will also open up your octave key because it'll be it'll just press on it right here and it'll just open it up a little bit and uh, you'll be playing that high g when you don't want to so be aware of those problems but that should get you started on lesson eight and about how to play single eighth notes and eighth note rests